Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are solving division equations with fractions, the type that you see right there on our title slide. Let's talk about what you can expect to see. We are going to talk about fractions, then we're going to solve equations involving fractions. Make sense? Let's do it. A fraction means division. That's about as easy as it comes. So this is my simple way of breaking down fractions for you and trying to take the fear out of it. Let me tell you something. One Halloween I dressed up as a fraction because I thought that's the scariest thing in the world for children. And I like to scare children. <laughs> this is such a weird lesson. Anyway, I'm trying to take the fear out of fractions now, so I'm going to have to get a new Halloween costume. But that's all it is, is division. So if I see this fraction, it means 10 divided by 2. If I see this fraction, even with the negative, it means negative 20 divided by 4. Fraction means division. Nothing to be scared about. Now we're going to solve equations. When To do this, you isolate the variable. These steps will look very similar because they're the same steps we do for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division equations. Step number one, Find the variable. We're going to identify our variable is n. The variable is the letter inside of the equation. That's what we're trying to figure out the value for. Step two, look at what it is connected to. In this case, it's connected to 20. Specifically, it's connected to divided by 20. So we're going to do the inverse or the opposite of dividing by 20, which means we multiply times 20. We can't do that to just one side of the equation, otherwise it's not balanced anymore. So we have to do that to both sides of the equation. Divided by 20 times 20, those are inverse, so they undo each other or cancel each other out. So we're left with n by itself on the left, and we have 20 times 2, or 2 times 20 on the right. 2 times 20 is 40. And that's it. 40 is the answer to this question. Remember, I told you you would use these steps again, so uh, let's do it. In lessons like the last four or five lessons, I've told you these steps. Keep using them. Step number one, find our variable. Step number two, what's it connected to? Divided by negative seven. So what are we going to do? The inverse of that to both sides of that equation. That means we're multiplying times negative seven on the left equation and on the right. Notice it's color coded there in red. On the right or on the left side of the equation, we get rid of the divided by negative seven times negative seven, and we're left with just n by itself. On the right side of the equation, six times negative seven, and we solve that and get negative 42. That's the way we solve this. It's looking hopefully pretty familiar by this point. So let's go ahead and change it just a little. With this equation, you might say, hey, I think I know a shortcut, and you're probably right. Try it out. Try and solve this one on your own, and come back, and I'll show you the steps I do. All right, welcome back. First step, find my variable. Second step, what's it connected to? It's not connected to anything. What does that mean? I don't have to do an inverse operation, because there's nothing to undo. I have the variable isolated by itself already. So I'm just going to go ahead and divide. Negative 36 divided by 9 gives me negative 4. That's the end. All right. Steps are the same with positives and negatives. So we're going to do a practice question here with negatives. This one here should be pretty straightforward given our previous example. Go, go, go. I meant go like you solve it on your own, not like leave. You didn't leave, did you? Am I an empty computer talking to an empty room now? Oh, you're back. Good. Let's do this one. This one here has no nothing connected to our variable. So we do find our variable, but there's nothing connected to it. So we're not going to do an inverse operation to isolate our variable. We're just going to divide. Negative 72 divided by 12 gives us positive 6. Negative divided by negative gives us a positive. So that one's pretty nice. All right. Here's some practice questions. I don't want you taking shortcuts. I want you following all the steps just like I did. I know how to do them. 
if I was asking you for shortcuts, if I was trying to do shortcuts, I would have saved myself a lot of time when making these slides. Go through the steps. It will help you in the future. Trust me on this one. All right, I want you to try and solve this one. It's a little bit challenging. If you follow all the steps, you're going to be in good shape. By the way, you will have to do the steps a couple of times. All right, try it out. It is different than the other ones, so I'm going to walk you through it as well. Find our variable. What is it connected to? It's connected to this 15. This one's a little different because we can't do an inverse operation in one step to get n by itself. So what we are going to have to do is actually multiply times n that gets it out of the denominator, and then we can actually work with it. So I'm going to take n times by, uh, it's hard to say it, n times n divided by n. It's n in the denominator times n. Those two will give you 1, or in other words, 15 times 1, which gives you 15. And then I have 5n over here on the right side of the equation. I'll now go through these steps again. Where's my variable? Right there. What's it connected to? 5. So I'm going to do the inverse of multiplying times 5. So I'll divide by 5. Both sides gives me n on the left, 3 on the, or n on the right, and 3 on the left. This equation took two steps to solve it. That's okay. We still followed all those steps all the way down, and that's what you're going to do. When the equations become more and more complicated, you might need to follow these steps a couple of times, but continue to follow these steps and it will work itself out. All right, here's one that has that variable of n in the denominator. You're going to have to follow exactly what we did on the previous slide. So I want you to go ahead and try that out. Three, two, one, go. All right, let's do it. Find our variable, n. What's it connected to? Negative 7. I do the inverse, which in this case is multiplying times n. Then when I simplify that down, I will get negative 7 on the left, 14n on the right. I'm going to follow those steps again. Find my variable, n. What's it connected to? 14. I do the opposite of that. Now, when you have a variable and a co uh, constant like this next to each other, a number and a letter, it means multiplication. So the inverse of that is division. I divide both sides by 14, and I end up with my final answer of negative 1 half. Negative 1 half is equal to n. All right. Here's one final practice of this type with our variable in the denominator. It's definitely the hardest question type. It requires that you do all of that extra work. So I wanted to give us three practice questions like that. Try it out on your own. Go. I, I Do the question on your own. Don't go anywhere. All right, you're back. Our variable, n, what's it connected to? Negative 54. <laughs> what are we going to do? inverse operation. The inverse of that divided by n is to multiply times n on both sides. This gives us negative 54 by itself on the left and 9n on the right. Now we're going to go through the steps again. Our variable is n. It's connected to 9, 9 times n. So we do the inverse, which is to divide both sides by 9. Simplify, and there we go. That's how we solve this type of question. It's again a little bit complicated. It's incorporating everything we've learned, all of these steps in previous lessons. So if you're sitting here going, this is really confusing, probably by now you've already logged out of the video. But if you did stick with me, thank you. And if you're still a little confused, go back to a solving multiplication equations video, probably posted about two or three weeks ago and solving, even solving addition and subtraction equations, and you'll see the foundation for solving all one-step equations before you get into this. It's a little more complicated. All right, a couple things to keep in mind. Isolate the variable or get it by itself, then solve and simplify. Don't take shortcuts because most of the time, 
they will lead you to being more confused when you get complicated equations. I hope that video was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.